Hey guys, welcome back to another important CSS video which is about positioning elements by using the CSS position property. There are many different ways that we can use to position the HTML elements and in this video we are going to study the CSS position property and its important values such as relative, absolute, fixed and sticky. So I have created a div container here and inside this container I have defined four div elements and with some styling I turned them into colorful boxes. So when we look at the current situation here, we see that they have a original positioning like each of the box is positioned on an each row and this is the original positioning which is known as the position static. So if we don't define anything to the boxes, we accept that these div elements do have a static position. For example, if I come here to the purple box and declare a static position, we see that nothing changes. Now, the first question you might ask here is that, okay, how can we change the purple box position? For example, how can we move the box a little bit to, to the right? There are some coordinate properties uh, that CSS provides. For example, left 50 pixels and top, let's say 20 pixels, okay? So if I define this, and save the changes, this box should be moved somewhere but it does not happen because we cannot apply these rules to statically positioned uh, elements. If you want to use this property such as left, top, right and bottom, you need to change this position property from static to another one, for example relative. We see that now it has moved. But the important thing here is that if I declare here 50 pixels to the left property, it didn't move to the left, but it moved to the right. So why is that? Because once you declare a relative position, it takes the box to its new position relative to its original position. So what you need to be careful about the relative positioning is that the elements are always taking the reference point such as their original position. So how about if we want to move this orange box to the very right side of this container. There is another position property that we can use, which is the position absolute. And if I save it, now something interesting has happened. The red box has disappeared. Actually, it has not disappeared, it's still there. But when we use the absolute positioning, it will be taken out of the normal document flow and placed above of the red box. So if I want to move it, for example, to write uh, a little bit like if I define it 5 pixels. Now we can see the red box again but it has moved to the very right of the page and it's not inside the container anymore. So why is this happening? There is a normal document flow which is that once we create these boxes and elements they are placed in their original flow, in a normal flow. Position static and relative does not break this document flow. For example, we have used position relative to the purple box, but these elements did not move up. But this is not the case for position absolute. If you use position absolute, then it will be taken. The yellow box is taken out of the normal document flow, like it is deleted completely from the page. And that's why the red box moved directly up. So if I delete this, you see that now it goes back to its original position. Now, the second question is that why it is not anymore inside the container, its parent element, and it's exactly placed to the very right of the web page. Now, when we declare an absolute positioning, they take their new reference point, the body itself. If you want to keep it inside this container, for example, then we need to declare the container another positioning element than the static one. So normally, you know, it's static, but if we change the behavior, the positioning behavior to relative, this time the yellow box is moved back inside to the container element and positioned itself five pixels away. So let me zoom in. The yellow box moved five pixels to the right of its parent element, which is the container. So this is the important thing you need to know about absolutely positioned elements. They are always being taken out of the normal document flow uh, like they are deleted. So that's why you should carefully approach the usage of the absolutely positioned elements because um, once they are removed from the normal flow, 
they can also overlap other elements. For example, if I go back here and change this to left, now we see that it overlapped the red box. In this case, there is another property you can use, which is the z-index property. The z-index property defines uh, which element comes to the front of other elements or which element will be positioned in the behind of other elements. And since the yellow box is, is taken out of the normal document flow, uh, now it comes in front of the red box, but we can change this behavior. So if you want to take the red box to the front, then you need to give here a lower value. Zero is the default value. So if I define zero, it will stay as it is. But if I define a negative number like minus one, this time you see that it goes behind. The yellow box goes behind and the red box comes to the front because this has a higher z-index value such as zero. Now the next important positioning value is position fixed, which has a really close behavior like the position absolute. If we define, for example, the red box, a position fixed value and save it. Now the red box will also be taken out of the normal document flow, like it happened to the absolute. But the difference from absolute positioning is that an element with a position fixed property will always stay in the same place, even if we scroll down the page. Like when I start scrolling down the page, we see that all of the elements start to disappear, even the absolutely positioned element. But the fixed element will always stay in the same place. And the other difference is that it does not accept any parent element. Even if the container has a relative position value, it does not behave uh, like the position absolute, but it takes the reference point uh, as the body element itself. So if I come here and define, for example, a top value and give 10 pixels, this time it will be positioned 10 pixels to the top so to recap, a fixed position element will also be taken out of the normal document flow. It does not take any uh, parent element as a reference point, but its reference point will be directly the body element itself, and it always stays in the same position. Okay, and the final position value is position sticky. Let's define the orange box, a position sticky value, and let's see what happens. And first of all, what we see here is that it came to the front of the relatively positioned element before it was behind of the purple box. And now it came to the front, but it is still in the same place. It has not been taken out of the normal document flow. And the different behavior uh, that a sticky element has is that it behaves like a relative positioned element to a point and after a scrolling point, it starts behaving like a fixed positioned element. It does not change its position. But currently we cannot see it inside this container because as I said before, the sticky positioned element does not uh, break the normal document flow down. So let's take this orange box out of the container. I am taking it out, out of the uh, container. And now it's positioned here, somewhere here. The next thing I need to do is to give a reference point to the sticky position element. If you leave it like this, then it does not work. We can give here a top of zero. And now if I try again, this time we see that the orange element, let's also delete the red one. Let's try again. Now the orange box, as we can see, is behaving uh, like a fixed position element after a scrolling point. And if the user does not reach that level, then it behaves like a normal uh, relative positioned element or, or static positioned element. So this is a very interesting uh, position behavior that you can use. And if you make this, for example, 30 pixels, and try again. Then we see that this time it will position itself 30 pixels relative to the top of the scrolling point this time. You can also play around with these different positioning and uh, coordinate properties until you understand how to use them 
uh, in a much better way. But another important thing about position sticky is that there is a website called canaiuse.com. I also put the link in the description part of this video. It shows the compatibility for each browser that you can use. And unfortunately, the position sticky property is not is not compatible with uh, Internet Explorer and uh, Opera Mini and also the uh, older versions of, of the popular browsers. But for the popular browsers such as Firefox, Chrome and Safari, you're not going to have any problems if you use position sticky. So guys, I hope you find this video helpful and if you do, please hit the like button and thank you for watching.